A major redevelopment in the inner north is crawling, slowly crawling its way to fruition, passing another step last night at a meeting of the Yarra Council. The land comprises a huge chunk of what used to be a gas and fuel depot and a city of Fitzroy rubbish tip years ago, just at the intersection of Alexandra Parade and St George's and not St George's Road and Queen's Parade, just opposite the Fitzroy swimming pool. If you're heading out on the Eastern Freeway, it's that big chunk of unused land on your left as you head off almost all the way, in fact, all the way along to Smith Street. Last night, the city of Yarra considered what they want to come from the redevelopment of this huge triangle of land that, under the previous state government, I might say, was going to be part and parcel of their tunnel plan. Socialist councillor on the city of Yarra, councillor Stephen Jolly, moved a number of motions to, in his view, improve the proposed use of the land last night. Councillor Jolly, good morning to you. Good morning, John. What was decided last night at the meeting of the city of Yarra? Well, we want the government to see this as a flagship for all developments in Melbourne. I mean, if we can't get low-cost housing, for example, on a government-owned site, we've got zero chance of getting it off for private developers. So we asked for 15% of low-cost housing on the 1,000 units that they're going to be having on this four-hectare site. We want a six-court indoor sports centre, which I think we're very confident we'll get that over the line. And also a few you know, less urgent issues like more bicycle spots, a bit more open space. But the key thing is to get a percentage of low-cost housing, inclusionary zoning, as they call it internationally, which we're, it's now a big debate in Sydney. It's increasingly coming into the Australian political um, debate. But um, here in Victoria, this is a real chance for the government to go on the front foot and instead of just wall-to-wall you know, expensive apartments that we'll have young people and people on or below the average wage that will be able to stay and live in the inner city. OK, so that, that's, an, that's a process that's already been embraced just up the road with the Carlton Flats redevelopment, is it not? So there's a model for what well, you I mean, want to at, achieve, at, isn't there? At, at the moment, um, you know, if you get 5%, you're lucky. At the Amcor site, which is a very big site, very close to the one that we're the talking about. The old paper mill site in Alfington. Correct. We got 5% there, but unfortunately, after 10 years, it goes back to the private sector. So it's not really a long-term um, step forward. This is a chance for the state government to say that we want to you know, plan for the inner city. So it's not just for people on big incomes. If you're young, if you're on or below the average wage, you know, there is going to be a place for you in the inner city. And we, we've asked for 15%. Let's see what we can get, um, and we're going to be pushing back and, and making that submission to the committee in April next month, and uh, as well as the indoor uh, sports centre, which is vital for um, social infrastructure as the population of Melbourne as a whole actually goes up. So what's an indoor sports centre mean? Does that mean basketball courts? Basketball, soccer, indoor cricket, and it means that the local schools in the area can access it during the day at a night time. People can you know, drive in from the eastern suburbs and, and, and use it. It's, it's got great parking there. It's right on pretty much on the freeway. And it's a win-win for everybody, but it's really sort of symptomatic of the fact that as the population goes up, we are not really planning enough with more kindergartens, more schools, more um, sports facilities. This is a chance to get ahead of the pack on that issue, and um, it's got huge support in the area. Okay, so this is what's called, I think, is it not in planning jargon, it's called an infill development. Pretty much, and there's going to be a lot of decontamination costs involved because of the nature of the site, as you explained to your listeners a few minutes ago. Um, It's four hectares, it's a big site. Um, but I can tell you that the private developers are moving there because of the, because of the nature of that area, North Fitzroy, Clifton Hill. They're going to make a lot of money. So we want to, we want to ensure that the, uh, the local community, especially those in lower incomes, aren't left behind. And that's why we want this 15% low-cost housing. And I'm very confident that the state government, especially in the run-up to, uh, to the state election at the end of the year, going to be in a very, it's going to be very difficult for them to tell us, no, we're not going to do that. Um, so we're confident that we're going to get a victory here. All right, let's watch this space. Thank you indeed, Councillor Stephen Jolly from the...